Right before I drive away to forget Why do I give a damn at everything we say? G'day guys, Chaos Chronicles. Alright, so I've been getting asked for a while now. Um, I've had a fair few people ask me about fighting and um, how I learned how to fight and where I learned how to fight. So, all right, let's get into it. So I guess, you know, um, I come from a, a background with a pretty violent father, you know, and um, so we we weren't one of these families that, that wasn't, you know, we were subjected to violence in the house. So, like, I didn't even have to leave the house to get subjected to, to violence, you know. And um, so I've I seen a lot of things growing up um, from from my dad and his mates, you know, and always used to see fights at our house. And, you know, there was always – we always used to have parties at our house every weekend and, you know, my dad would throw big parties and – almost every single one of those parties, my dad would get in a fight with someone, you know. So it was always in my house from a very young age. And, you know, my dad was somewhat of a, um, a gangster himself, you know, and it's where I learned most of that from. But I guess, I guess most of it started from school. So I am the youngest of three. And so I have an older brother and an older sister and my older brother is almost five years older than me and my older sister is three years older than me. And, um, yeah, so my, my first school years were pretty hectic, pretty full on. So I remember my, my first day of grade prep, so my first day at primary school, um, I must have fought, you know, half of the grade five and six kids on that first day so like literally literally probably fought five people on recess and maybe five or six more on lunchtime and that was common every single day so my brother was in grade six when i was in grade prep and so you know i was fighting all of my brother's friends um and yeah that was it was, pr it was pretty full on and so from a very young age you know i just well, I just assumed that that's what went on at school, you know, and I remember I, I I got in trouble and I didn't want to get in trouble and so that that stopped it for a long time and I remember um, I was in grade two, so two years really, and um, yeah, somebody, I remember riding to school with my sister and somebody called my sister a slut and they were one of the older kids and um, yeah, I chased them all the way to school. I remember he was putting his bike in the bike rack. I just jumped on his bag and pulled him to the ground and went to town on him. And I got suspended for that my first time in grade two. And so that that kind of started a whirlwind of suspensions for me. And and that went that went on, you know, right up until high school. Um, I was expelled from um, my high school, my first high school. Um, I was then, so I was then taken, I went, my mum put me in a private school. That went really well, but we couldn't afford to do that anymore. It was really expensive and, you know, bless my mum for doing that for me and trying to give me, you know, a better chance. And then, so I went back to my normal school. The first day I went back there, I got suspended um, my first day and then that was it. So um, I basically... We actually moved town from there and and moved to a country town called Benalla. And, um, yeah, I mean, it all started from there. Like, I, I thought that I fought a lot when I was in Melbourne. But, like, when I moved to a country town and, and yeah, it was just I literally had on my first day of high school, I literally had three fights on my first day. Just people knowing that my last name was what it was and I guess they were just testing me, you know. Um, um, but then, but then I, I started doing boxing when I was like 15 years old um and and really that kept me out of trouble for a lot of time for a lot of time i actually it was a police gym so it was a, a youth boys club 
that as you guys know that most of those youth boys clubs back in the day the boxing gyms were run by the police and um yeah so i actually was 15 years old i was the youngest guy training at that boxing gym and there was no one else i could spar with um there was no other kids going there and so I was actually sparring with two or three different um, police officers from our local town, which was good for me, you know. And so pretty pretty soon I, I learned that, that I could fight pretty good, you know. And, um, you know, we had, we had trainers that were coming in and, and trying to train me. Um, to work on certain things and, 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 and I picked everything up really, really well and, and um, I thought that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. All the, male, all the males in my family um, do boxing and so I, I thought that's what I wanted to do as well and um, so I never used to drink or anything like that and, and so I guess I got to about the age of 17 and and then I started getting into trouble outside, you know, and I started to get in trouble at my gym because I was fighting outside. And, um, you know, my, my boxing trainer would say to me, don't fight outside the gym. You're giving our gym a bad name. If you want to fight someone, tell them to come to the gym. We'll strap the gloves on them and you can fight them that way, you know. So I did that a couple of times. I invited a couple of people down to my gym and I fought them and 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 we shook hands after it and we were sweet you know but um it was intense growing up in a country town as a male i'm not i'm not going to lie like these country towns are crazy for fighting and once i had a name for fighting that was just it you know it kind of stuck well then i turned 18 and and things took took another turn again you know um i guess you know i started drinking and which was a bad thing for me i don't drink now to this day for for this reason because i'm a violent drunk and i didn't realize at the time and i actually thought that everyone else was the problem not me but it turns out me drinking i'm exactly like my dad when i drink and i get violent and you know i'm never wrong and 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 it just and it just led me to getting into so many fights you know I'd fought all the bouncers around our area. Um, you know, I got really bad at fighting and started getting a really big name for fighting. Um, the local bike club in our area, I, I, I fought a lot of them guys. Um, and, you know, I just, it was just something that, that just, just kept coming. And like, you know, even though I may have been getting better at street fighting, all this bullshit that came with street fighting was, was starting to happen, you know, like I was starting to go to prison and, and, and things started happening because I was fighting. Um, and so, you know, um, I guess, you know, fighting is how I learn how to fight. Like I must have had hundreds and hundreds of fights. I'm not even like from the age of 15 to 25, um, you know, I must have had two fights every single weekend for at least two fights every single weekend and then not counting during the week. And, and then, you know, I was drug dealing at the time. So, you know, the people that owed me money would be getting beat downs as well. And, man, I was clocking up this massive number of fights and it was very evident that I was going to end up in prison and I did. And so, you know, I, I started, I, I had this thought in my mind that, you know, all these, all these people that are having fights in jail, like the majority of prison fights, jail fights are in a cell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll say 80% of them are in the cell and 20% of them happen just wherever they happen, but most of them happen in the cell. So I started um, getting my mates to come in the cell and I would get them to hold the pads for me in the cell. And so, you know, I would get them to hold the pads and, and, and we would train fighting in the, in the cells. So all of my mates, if you were my mate, that's what we did. We trained in the cell and, and that's how we done it. And then I would also, um, you know, I would get people to, to come at me with plastic knives. And so in most prisons in Australia, we have um, in Victoria, we have plastic cut cutlery. So there is a couple of jails, prisons where you do have metal cutlery, but a majority of them are plastic cutlery. 
And so I used to get people to, you know, try and stab me in all different ways, every way, you know. I'd even get my cellmates to to get me, like, to try and sneak on me with, you know, come up behind me, put the plastic knife to my throat, and then we would figure out ways to get out of that, um, you know. And then, and then um, MMA became a big thing, and then, you know, I really wanted to, to learn all these MMA moves and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu um now i remember this guy um i can't remember his name you know i'd like to give him a shout out but i can't remember his name but what a legend oh my god i just had it uh shui shui you absolute legend i'm not going to use your first name but bro you taught me some things that quite possibly got me in trouble but you taught me some things that got me out of a lot of trouble so you know um being grabbed by people by the behind- from behind you know i learned how to 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 work my way around that and am i am i a professional mma fighter or bjj fighter absolutely not but do i know some moves that helped me get out of trouble absolutely and do i think that that helped me like like getting all these people to pretend to stab me and 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 be real and do it hard you know and then i would get my sallies to to come up behind me and put a knife to my throat without me knowing i'd say just just randomly do it and and i'll try and get out of it you know so i'd be sitting there watching tv old mate would be up on his bunk or whatever and he'd slowly climb down he'd get his plastic knife and then put it up to my throat and bang i would have to try and get out of that and that's what i did you know i, I spent when I was in prison, every moment that I was in that cell by myself, I was trying to better myself. I would shadow box. I would I would put myself in scenarios, you know what I mean? And then when I used to get sallies, I used to do the same thing. I, I would replicate scenarios and then try and – the, the, the outcome of that was for me to try and get out of every scenario, you know? And I guess I thought in my mind that, that if I can – better myself in all these scenarios, well, then I'm a little bit safer than the next bloke, you know, and because prison is a bad, bad, bad place. And, you know, people are, are, are literally preying on your demise. Do you know what I mean? They're, and Unless you've got like your, your crew of your waxers in jail, your waxers are your mates. So my mate is my waxer. That's what we call him. We're waxers, you know, we're waxing. And so, you know, um, other than your your immediate friend group, the rest of these people are, are preying on your downfall. And especially if you're a somebody in that um, in that prison, you are definitely having people preying on your downfall. And and especially if you're someone with a little bit of stature, people get jealous of you, and people you know will will try and take you out. Mainly, they will try and take you out by snitching on you or dropping a note. Not many people will come at you, but people are preying on your demise in prison. It's it's a horrible, horrible, toxic environment. So I try and explain people, prison is exactly like high school, right? So the attitude of people's is exactly like high school. There's no absolute difference. So you've got bullies like high school. People think that it's cool and it's funny to pick on people like high school. It is very much like high school. But picture everyone in your high school having a shank on them and then picture everyone in your high school, so say 80% of your high school, are a chance at, at stabbing you. Do you know what I mean? That's basically exactly what it's like. The attitude of people is very much like high school. But, you know, all of these people in, in, in this high school are dangerous, you know. I always say this to people also. So prison is like outside you have 5% of people that can fight and that are crazy and 95% of people are just normal and don't do that shit. Whereas prison is backwards. 95% of people can fight and will fight but 5% of people won't fight and don't fight, you know? It's a really, really target-enriched area. It's it's kill or be killed. And as horrible as that sounds, that's the reality that you are in. The reality that you are in is that, you know, you are with criminals, people that are in there for being bad people. So it's not like, you know, you're at work and, you know, 
you might see someone that looks bad, this and that. This is prison where people are fucking bad and they will fucking hurt you. And so I guess I just had it in my mind. I wanted to have, I wanted to be able to, to better myself better than the rest of these guys. So I practiced my fighting and my violence as much as I could. And, and I learned from, from a very young age that practice definitely makes perfect. And, and that's what I did. Um, you know, I would, I would see a lot of things on TV and I would try and replicate that as well, you know? So I guess I basically, um, maybe taught myself how to fight. My brother added into that. My dad added into that. My sister added into that. Not my, not my beautiful mumsy. She wanted nothing but the best for me and, and wished that I didn't fight from a very young age, you know, bless your cotton socks, mumsy. Um, but I did, I turned out a fighter and I ended up spending 98% of my adult life in prison. And, you know, from the age of 18 until, you know, three years ago, I was hardcore going to prison, you know, and have spent um, well over 12 years in prison and yeah, it's, it's just not worth it guys. And I look back now and think that, you know, if I had had as a younger age, maybe a bit more of a better, um, I'm not going to say upbringing because my mum absolutely wanted nothing but the best for me, um, growing up and, um, absolutely gave me nothing but the best. And, you know, I, I would like to say that, you know, had I had um, better, better, you know, I will, I will put some of the blame on my dad, definitely, you know, I would, I would, as a child, so my dad would tell me, you don't get bullied at school. If you get bullied at school, you, you act on it straight away. And then I would come home and then I would get... I would get belted for fighting. So I've got an old man that's telling me to leave the house and hurt people if they try and hurt me. And then I'm getting hurt. I'm getting bashed at home for doing that. So I was confused as well. I was like, damn, um, obviously I'm not to be telling my old man about fights, you know, otherwise he is going to whoop my ass for it. But, you know, I, I believe that, you know, my dad p played a big, a big part in how violent I ended up, but I'm not going to put that whole blame on my dad. I wanted to be as violent and, and, and the way I was, the way I was, was because of how I wanted to be, you know, I had ample opportunity and I'm not going to be one of those people that sits here and says, Oh, this happened, this happened and this happened. That's why I ended up the way I did. No, no, not fucking true. When you are an adult, you make your own choices, you know, and you can't go throwing blame on other people. That's what children do. Adults don't do that. We take responsibility for our actions and we try and better that. But I guess it took me a long time to realize that I was the fucking problem and I really, really was. And still to this day, I've never hurt an innocent person. I've never hurt somebody that didn't have the fucking shit coming to them. You know, I have never gone out of my way to hurt an innocent person, not once, you know, um, and ha has there been times where innocent people have been hurt because of me, but was that what I set it out to do? No way. Absolutely not. That's what I set out to do. You know, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I taught myself all these things and I wanted to be this badass. So you couldn't, there wasn't anything you could have done to try and make me differ the way I wanted to turn out. I turned out the way I turned out. Yeah, I had a shit upbringing, this and that, but that's not the way, the reason I turned out the way I did. I turned out the way I did because that's what I fucking wanted. I wanted to be this badass person. I wanted to be somebody who everybody feared. And that's what I set out to do, make everybody fear me. And when everybody feared me, that's when, you know, but then I realized that this is not good. And, and, and you know, I, I decided to make my life better. And yeah, mate, I was, it was only, you know, years ago now, a few years ago now where, where I really started putting all these things into place and changing my life. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and put the way that I turned out 
the blame onto anybody else. The way I turned out was because of me. And yeah, did I have a shit up bringing this and that, but that's not the reason I turned out the way I did. The reason I turned out the way I did is, yeah, life, life kicked me up the pants a couple of times, but ultimately because of the choices that I made, which is going to bring me into what I'm going to say now, which is, you know, you can sit there and you can say, oh, my parents are the reason and the way I am today or society is the reason I am to the, the way I am today. Fucking bullshit. That is the biggest cop out. You are the reason why you are today. Only you can be the writer of your your future and where you're going to be. That's you. And putting your blame onto other people, well, that's what high school people do. And we don't do that. So, you know, I was... The reason I was the way I was was all my fault and I take 100% responsibility for that. And look where it ended me up, guys. You know, spending all of my adult life in prison and and what a waste, such a waste. Um, And guys, so for those people that are out there that are watching this and you're living that kind of life now where you're trying to make people fear you, you might be a drug dealer, you might be a gangster, this and that, believe me, Those fears are going to be what sinks you in the end. Believe me, that is going to be what sinks you. So when you do a serious crime, those fears of you is what's going to get you sank. Those fears might have made people not make statements against you and not snitch on you in the start. But believe me, that fear of you is going to what make people sink you in the end i promise you that right now it's a bullshit bullshit life and and seriously who are you trying to prove anything to like seriously you don't have to prove yourself to anyone so who are you trying to prove yourself to it's just not worth it guys it is absolutely not worth it i spent 20 years of my life entrenched in this life and for what outcome i have been stabbed i have been shot and I spent most of my adult life in prison. And none of this would have happened if I had said to myself, oh, I want to be a worker. I want to be a a attributing member of society. None of this shit would have happened. So there you go, guys. That's my fighting and how it all came about and, and what a bullshit life it ended me up with. You do not want to replicate my behavior. I promise you that right now, it will only end you up one of two places, prison or dead. And if you don't end up in prison, you're a snitch. I've said this before, and I couldn't say that with more heart. And that's the absolute truth of it. All right, guys, I've been the chaos chronicles. You guys have been absolutely awesome. I am also the guy decides if you and your friends walk out of here or not.